Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where imagination drives creativity. Today I'm building my first rover. It's not going to be very complicated, but it is going to save us a lot of kilometers on this suit. There's nothing more challenging than getting around your first base, trying to rely heavily on your power suit or even jetpack, especially if you don't have any ice around. Before starting to work on the rover, I built a small platform, that way we can keep our build level. It's important to try to keep it level so that you don't run into a problem with clearances. First I'm just going to put down a small landing gear, like around here somewhere. That should do it. I put a small landing gear because if you try to build on a large grid, it's only going to give you large blocks, but if you drop a small landing gear, you can make a small grid on a large grid. Just a few batteries here and there. The motors on a small rover drive system really don't take that much power, so a few batteries is all you really need. Next, I'm just going to grab some materials so we can put a medium cargo container on and a connector. That way, if we do find any ore, we can easily just drill some out, throw it in the medium cargo container, fill it up, and drop it back off at our base for refinery. Better extend the chassis some, though. Yeah, I forgot to do the batteries first. There's no way I'm going to be able to reach them if I do the cargo container first. All right, that's going to do it. Well, need a couple more material. Okay, so we have the basic platform built. It's not very much, and we're going to extend it later, of course. I always start out the simplest as possible, and as I add more components, that's when I'll extend out the chassis. Because if you try to make the chassis first without measuring out your other components, you're probably going to have a really long chassis and waste a lot of material. That's a small, or that's a medium carbon code container. This is the connector. A connector allows you to transfer items to and from a substation or your main base and your rovers or your ships. I'm trying to use a fighter cockpit, but I don't think I have the resources for it. Plus, it's kind of big, so I might just try to go with something smaller unless I extend this all the way out again. No, I don't think it's going to work. Well, that's done. And this is done. I decided to switch over to a smaller utility cockpit because the fighter cockpit, you actually need cobalt in order to create the metal grid that's required for it. So for now, we're just going to use the utility one. It'll save us overall on resources anyways. This is a three meter or a size three wheel that I'm using. Make sure that you put the left ones on the left side and the right ones on the right side. It does determine your steering and your driving. I have done it before where I put them on the wrong side and it was pretty whacked out when trying to control the thing. Alright, well that's three out of four, but now this holder's in the way. I'll just move it real quick. Mm, 
fagged a little, but it doesn't look too bad. Just remove a couple of blocks, and I should be able to place the last gear. Alrighty then. Well, that didn't work out as great. I underestimated for the weight, I guess, and how much it would actually tip this thing over. Either way, got it done. Maybe add some weight to the front. I'm just adding a small antenna and then an ore detector. That way we can actually see what kind of ore is around us. All right, now uh, let's get this thing off of here. Oh, there we go. That was actually really easy. Not very talented at driving, but this thing is kind of spunky. I like it so far. Not very stylish over these things sticking out like that. Maybe I should try to make a bumper or something around them. Worst thing you could do is put them right on the front like I just did and then hit a rock. I tell you, it, that thing will just pop right off. Your antenna piece will go flying, your ore detector will be gone. Yeah, maybe do it this way, I don't know. Usually the best laid plans, I think, are an afterthought. Well, there's space right in front of that medium cargo container. Maybe I'll just put them there. Yeah, look at that. If I put them here, then if we hit anything, at least they won't break off as easy. It doesn't really matter where you put the ore detector or the antenna, they'll have the same range either way, unless you have a gigantic ship. If your ship is about 200 meters long or 200 blocks long, you may want to put them on the front, otherwise the old caboose there won't be picking up anything. And since we are not going to use any type of O2 generator or anything like that, I'm just going to throw on two solar panels for the heck of it. In case we go too far out, we'll have to wait for sunlight, of course, to recharge the batteries, but it doesn't take very much to move this thing. I think the solar panels themselves in broad daylight could actually move it. And there we are. And number two is done. Hmm. Kind of looks like an insect of some sort now. That's weird. Anyways, I'll just finish off this front end here, kind of cut it in. We still want a bumper of some sort because we don't want to damage our utility cockpit here. I know my driving isn't the best, so I try to make everything as secure as possible, cause the least damage to myself. All right, yeah, it's kind of looking like a fly of some sort, I think. Oh, that turned out strange. But also, I need a way of maybe connecting this to the my base because if we pick stuff up, we really want to be able to deposit it to refine it. We don't want to have to carry everything by hand from the rover over. I know there's got to be something better than the just these conveyor blocks. I should probably check my inventory to see what else I can build. They use a lot more resources. I think there was tubing or something I saw in there. Oh, uh, yep, there it is. This conveyor tubing will light up green when completely connected from one point to another. But it has to be two objects that are already on the conveyor system or part of a conveying system, such as a connector, a basic refiner, a conveyor block itself. Or you can connect it to an assembler and so on. For now, I'm just going to put it down here and then 
finish it all off and put a connector on it. That way we can drive the rover into it and recharge slightly before we test this thing out. Connectors are great also for using them as storage. So if you don't have any cobalt or anything and you can't build the small or the large cargo container, what I do is create a level of conveyor blocks and then I put a bunch of connectors on it. They hold close to what a small cargo container holds, so it's not that big of a loss, but you don't need any cobalt to do it. You can still use iron, nickel, and silicone to build all the components. Yeah, this ramp is better. I needed it to extend it. That way we can actually turn around on the platform. Otherwise, we'd have a heck of a time maneuvering to reach that connector. As long as I don't bounce it up over this thing, we're good. Oh. Oh. Uh, yep. Kind of hit it there. All right, a uh, 900 point turn, I think. I might have to extend this farther just so we can turn it. Even though it's not a big rover, the turning radius is not the greatest. That should do it. Oh yeah, there's plenty of space. Now, whenever you use this landing gear with a small rover, with the block height of the connector, it probably won't line up perfectly the first time. When two connectors line up, they turn yellow. So that way you can activate them and connect them together or lock them together. I'm going to adjust the gear down. We're going to go turn this thing into a low rider, and it should match after that. All you have to do is adjust the offset height somewhere on here. Oh, there it is. And, yeah, it's probably going to have to be all the way down. And there we go. Well, thanks for watching, and please leave your comments in the comments section below.